What's going on everybody? It's Frito here for your Overwatch. Today we're going to be covering a very important topic, target prioritization. We have discussed focus fire before, and the concept of focus fire is when you and your teammates are picking a target and shooting it all together. Target prioritization is the process of picking the best target to focus fire, and in a hectic team fight, it can get a little crazy and hard to figure out. So I'm going to show you a bunch of examples of breaking into team fights, who to focus first, and in those chaotic fights where it's hard to figure out what you should be doing, hopefully a few examples of what the best options are. Now in these first sets of clips, we're playing on Hanamura. I'll show you clips of both sides, attack and defense. As far, I stay behind my team to avoid any unnecessary chip damage. As we start to set up, I take a peek over the top in order to get a lay of the landscape to see where their healers are. Once we find them, we send the Winston to have at them, creating space with his bubble for us to push through, deal devastating damage to the healers and trade them out, and once that happens, and we have healers alive and they don't, it's not too difficult to maintain in the fight and overwhelm them. Capture point specifically is very huge for this because if your healers stay alive and their healers are dead, you have a high percentage chance of being able to sustain which is even more important on this second point because your frags don't matter as much as sustaining because their spawn is so close. You can't simply get pickoffs and then use respawn advantage because you don't have it in this case. Instead, you need to have correct focus fire. So we take out the Ana first in the fight, and by the time she has time to get back into the fight, she's dying to my barrage again. We didn't even have to face against the deadly nano boost, and it ended up looking easy. Now on defense, they're shaping up to push onto the point, and we see two tanks and an Ana. Of course, whenever there's tanks, but a squishy behind them, focusing your fire behind the tanks towards the squishy is always the way to go because otherwise if you just shoot into the tank the healer should be able to out heal them now the opposite of what i just said happened there because the reinhardt was down yes the mercy was behind him but she was a harder target to get at the time we used hammer down to get reinhardt down and since we know he's not gonna be able to have his shield up for a moment or two we just focus him down first as he's just a big easy target to hit and we can out dps the mercy anyway Sometimes it's difficult to know what you should focus and when, but sometimes you are going to have to make the choice to avoid the healer to focus fire a vulnerable target, because if you spend too much time chasing down a healer, you may actually be contributing so little to the fight that it works out in the enemy team's favor. Now hopefully show an example of this while I play on D.Va. I do use her as a bit of an enforcer tank on this point, so when I see that the Reaper's teleporting behind us, me and Widow have no problem chasing him down, and because I can fly back into the fight, I didn't spend too much time to confirm that kill and I'm able to get back into the fight quickly. The Reinhardt charges away and has health so there's no point to keep pegging him with damage. Instead I focus my fire onto the Ana. Now the Zarya is there to wreck my dreams and I get a call at that Rhine's lit so I go chase him down to confirm that kill. In the muck I find the healer again and focus my fire on the healer because otherwise Zarya would just have infinite health and my damage would be negligible. I get word that there's another flanker yet again McCree behind us and I know as D.Va I have a really favorite fight against McCree, so regardless of what his health is, I go chase him down. If that was a Tracer, I may have thought twice about chasing her, because it may have taken too much time. Speaking of that, I get in a fight with this Roadhog here, when he's honestly not in a great position anyway. He's off to the side, and because I know I can basically battle him pretty fairly 1v1 if my aim's good, I do try to, but he's able to get away, and I get slept, and probably not the best contribution of my focus fire by fighting him. If I went back to the main attack or even try to pounce a squishy at the door and, and avoided the Roadhog, even if it did mean I took some damage, we may have even have won that fight there. Maybe not, but those small decisions of avoiding a tank to fight it and kill a squishy typically is best. Here I'm playing on Winston, swapping off rolls to basically do the same play that we opened up with the first time. We initiate onto both healers, and I do shoot through the Zarya shield with good reason. Giving Zarya charge is oftentimes scary for a lot of players, they don't want to do it, but what's even worse is to avoid an opportunity to deal damage on the most crucial enemy on the other team, which of course is Ana. 
Ana can build her ult incredibly quickly even after the nerf, so if she's alive for any bit of time, there's a chance that she can hit enough shots to get nano boost, and if she gets nano, you're just gonna lose the fight, more or less, whether she dies or not. Zarya dealing damage was not our fear there, because if we have healers and they don't, we should be able to outheal Zarya anyway. We do dive into this next point too, and try to eliminate whatever squishies we can find. It takes a bit too much time, really, and their tanks are left with me and Genji trying to fight them, and it's just not working out. So this fight ends up a wash. What that means is the Reaper on our team definitely has to stay alive or stay in the fight. So it's important that we get him involved. With that being said, I try to go for one of the biggest counters to Reaper, McCree on the high ground. And with no stun and no strong range damage, our Reaper pretty much should be able to have a good day. Figuring out the most important target to focus may take you the entirety of the match to really work out. You may have to isolate their best player or isolate the character that's countering your main DPS. If you're trying to use Farah, you can't let the hitscan stay alive for any period of time or she's going to be taken out. Here we're utilizing Reaper, and with the heroes that we have, we can't really do much against tanks if he's dead. Focusing on the things that counter him as well as the healers when we can was the path to victory here. Well, really, to a tie because games at diamond level in six stack are this competitive that oftentimes we have to play amazing just to tie. Anyway, right here at the end, I'm fighting tanks because obviously that's all that's left, which should be the case. They can't really deal enough damage fast enough to kill anything, so you should be able to win the fight in that instance unless they have an ultimate. There, I dive the McCree just to stop any last second heroics, at the very least a body block for my team. If he pulls that trigger too early, he won't even kill me, and I'm likely to absorb a lot of the damage. Now here we have yet another really tough game on Volskaya. We have a little over three and a half minutes here to take both points. They have been running Ana this whole time, so she's going to be our key target. We're going to jump over and initiate similarly to how we did on Hanamura, but I'm digging and digging and just can't find any gold. Don't find the target I'm looking for and try to keep myself alive, but stay on the ground for too long and end up dying. We do find the Ana in the back line, but trading me out means that... Genji's left by himself to deal damage, and we ended up just not finishing that push, so we regroup here. On this next push, I play a little bit smarter with my life. Yes, I do want to kill the Ana, but if she's hiding way too far in the back or she's inaccessible, there's no reason to kill myself just to get to there. Furthermore, if I am able to take out their Reaper or at least pressure him to being out of the fight, we should be able to sustain on the push bit longer. We zone him out, and as he tries to re-enter, he gets ulted, and pretty much that's the biggest DPS threat that existed. Other than this Roadhog who's ulting that I run away from, we're able to fall into the warm embrace of our healers, get healed back up, re-engage and ult ourselves, and snowball momentum on the point. They do kind of a really weird decision here and decide to start to stall it as best as they can, but with no answer to the Farah, I'm really able to just pick whichever target I want first and take them out. They had a nano boosted target, and since the boop attempt didn't work to kill it, I just switched my attention to killing Ana so that she couldn't pocket him forever, then Reaper, and then whatever's left. At this point, it's a foregone conclusion that we're going to win this point, and you could probably say that this is a big mistake on the enemy team. They're probably relying on the fact that they spawn so close to the next point that they don't mind at least attempting some heroics there. With all six of us there, it was pretty much impossible, and it may have lost them the game. We go off to the right side first and find an opening to take out their healers, and we do so. Mei does ult, and we do get wiped, but our Reinhardt comes in to save the day, putting all them down, and a res keeps us alive. Still focusing on the Ana now, as she is the biggest threat. Lucio almost gets me here in the back line, but I don't even let him damage me. Yes, I, I don't even want to take damage from a Lucio. As far as, you pretty much never want to be taking any damage and be dueling damage from afar as best as you can. Because on these last points, like I said, you can't afford to die. So as things start to get into a fight here below me, I'm constantly trying to shoot at whatever the biggest threat to my teammates are. Reaper is always going to be number one because he has the biggest burst of damage. Try my best to crowd control the tanks away from my teammates, but I notice that it's just me and Genji left in the fight, but we have reinforcements. I'm able to keep distance away from the Roadhog, Hook, and the tanks and wait for a bit of a regroup here. The enemy still kind of has an advantage because their spawns are so much closer, but if we're able to get a pick off here, we may even build a snowball yet again. Our Genji ultimates and goes off to 
start to slice and dice them to the right side and takes out a Lucio, but the Beyblade comes through and rips right through our entire lineup. That just shows you the devastating power of failing to either kill the Reaper or the Ana early in the fight. They can just wipe you. Luckily, we had Mercy Res in our pocket, and that saved the day here. Also, with Far, I can constantly get elevation over these May walls, and they don't really deter our ability to shoot incoming reinforcements. We focus down everything that's left and then realize we barely even took one part of this point yet. We, the battle's not over, boys. We do take out the Reinhardt here, and we finally have a chance to start capping. The healers run to the point to stall it even further, but I punish them with Barrage, take out the Reaper, and now we're starting to cap it a bit. But we have to start to trickle their respawns as they come. Lucio gets hooked, but a god Winston Barrier comes in to stop Lucio from getting focused. May jumps in, and we focus our attention on the closest thing first. Sometimes in these hectic environments, whatever you can just guarantee damage onto is what you should go for. If the shot's too difficult, it might be an inefficient use of your time until a better target presents itself. With a few reses and a whole bunch of ultimates and good focus fire on the incoming enemies, we're able to win over that point. Ha! Ah, as easy as one, two, three. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Sort of a longer play-by-play -play analysis for you guys to hopefully pick a few tips up from. You may have to watch this one again because there's a lot densely packed in this video. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button. It really does help us out. Follow us on Twitter for all sorts of updates, stream announcements, etc. We have a Discord server where you can team up with fans of the channel to play Overwatch with. Let me know your thoughts on this below, especially if this helped you out when trying to figure out who to shoot because it can get confusing with so much going on. Well, that's been it for me. I've been Frito for your Overwatch. I'll see you guys next time.